Alan Sharps, welcome to a very, very foggy Snetterton. It's EP3 test day. So I've arrived fashionably late, as you'd expect. I got in about one o'clock last night, got up at four. Yeah, not feeling the freshest, but we're here. We made it. So plan for today, we've got four 30 minute sessions, you know, standard test day. Four 30 minute sessions, we're gonna do the first two with the car as it is, and then the last two with the new tires, just to kind of scrub them in a little bit. Yeah, we did the alignment late last night. Everything should be pretty good. We've got new brakes, Dixels. This video is sponsored by Talk GT for supplying the Dixels. So thank you very much. Dixel brakes are going to uh, give us some confidence for sure. The pedal feels good as well. I've changed to Miller's Fluid lately, if you're wondering. I've tried them all. They're all much or muchness, to be honest. All the racing brake fluids. There's not much in it. I only moved because they stopped making the Golf stuff. I'm just going to check the engine oil on this. So the time I've had it in the week, we've done a, an engine oil service, new brakes and a, a wheel alignment. Didn't have a chance to do any of the nice jobs like fix the wing or polish the headlights. Didn't have a chance to do any of that. That'd have been nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, but the car should be ready to rip. Yeah, look forward to it. I'm out in about 10 minutes. So yeah, just going to get ready. Just like give you a quick intro. Going out for our first session. So I'm going to drop the tyre pressures down on the back. Apparently the MRS like it quite high. Higher than what you'd expect. But I'll let you know what I think. Obviously I'm completely new to driving the car. I did drive Simon's DC5 the other day obviously, which is basically the same. No ABS on that either, no ABS on this. So yeah, I'm sure I can figure it out. Just have to be careful we don't lock those brakes. But yeah, let's get to it. First session. Right then, it's time for his first drive with the EP3. So this ended up actually being the second session. The first one got called off due to fog. So we're about 11 o'clock in the morning. Been waiting around quite a bit. Fixed quite a few things on the car. The seat was loose and the harnesses were a bit... Some other little stuff. Just got myself comfortable, you know. So we're going out now. This is the first ever time driving the car on track. Going as steady as you like turn into this first hairpin yeah what an amazing start that was yeah right in front of everyone span out straight away that really happened second corner span out yeah I was feeling a little bit embarrassed straight away Going over 100 mile an hour, you started hearing all the stones coming out from the bottom of the car. Turns out the last time it was out, it went into the gravel quite hard, so just shaking them off. This wasn't my first time on MRF tyres, so I should have known what to expect really. But if you've never driven on them before, they've got a really long warm up window. Especially on a car like this, which won't use its rear tyres that much. But even when they were on the back of the MR2, they took ages to warm up. And then when they are warm, the grip levels are... <laughs> maybe somewhere around the Toyota R888, which obviously gets up to temperature a lot quicker than what an MRF does. But yeah, a bit of a strange tyre. Wouldn't be my first, second, third or fourth choice, I don't think, but it's what this series uh, regulates. All the cars have to be on this tyre, so we're all even, but yeah, it's a strange tyre. It's not, not my favourite. Anyway, second lap in, I started getting a bit of a groove for it. Overtook some cars, which obviously helps for the old confidence. I 
adjusting the bias valve quite a lot just trying to get you know used to where it should be but one thing I didn't realize at the time was just how flat spotted all my tires were so once you get one flat spot it's very easy to then lock up again and again and the rear tires that are on the car now they probably had yeah I'm not even joking when I say up to about 10 on each so yeah they were they weren't 50 pence pieces they were more like um, two 50 pence pieces <laughs> yeah and another thing that I noticed pretty quick was when I was coming out of these tight left hand corners the car was dropping out of VTEC and I'd just changed the oil I checked the oil that morning I knew the oil was up but yeah it was dropping out of VTEC which would indicate either low revs which I was pretty confident I wasn't low revs or low oil not enough oil to build up the oil pressure to engage VTEC so that was in the back of my mind I was pretty concerned about that but I just uh, carried on driving anyway, the car felt alright just about. So I got some good enough laps in to get used to the car, I think my best were about a 219, which is about what I did in the MR2 at you know, my absolute best pace. So. To go out in the EP3 and match it straight away was pretty good. Obviously the EP3 is more powerful but it's also more weight and when I've been doing the multi-class things we know we can we can hang just about with an EP3. They're always gonna be a little bit faster, but you know I have my benchmarks set from what I've done in the MR2. try and get this EP3 going where I wanted I mean the tyres weren't helping at all the tyres everyone's on the same aren't they so I just had to get my brain in gear to learn how to drive on these MRF tyres but I ended up stopping the session probably about halfway through just simply because this VTEC thing was starting to get really concerning sure what was going on so I decided to pit check the car over and yeah my best time was a 219.3 which is not absolutely terrible but we definitely need to do a lot better than that well this is my first session in the car forgot you had brand new brakes at the start slightly uh, the brakes came good in the end a lot of uh, locking up, a lot of dodgy feeling from the tyres. It's not feeling so prime this car, but hey, first impressions. I'm never that impressed, am I? First impressions. This has also decided to, I think it wants to leave the chat a little bit. Do you want to leave the chat or not? You do want to leave the chat? Right, okay. I can assist you with that stuff. Just walk this way, yeah? So I come in early as well because um, the car seemed to be like dropping out of VTEC a little bit. So I was like, oh shit, that's not good. Now it might just be because of standard gear ratios and I was just, you know, not going fast enough, but it kind of feels like um, maybe there wasn't enough oil in it. So, you know, if there's not enough oil in it, it's not going to build up enough oil pressure and that's a surefire way to kill the engine on the first session, isn't it? So I thought I'd better pull in and give the car a check. There's also a knock from the front right, like a, a knocking noise, like something's loose. So I need to investigate that. I tried to set the dampers before going out. I didn't video it, but rear damper's fine, but the front are inverted, so it's on the bottom. I don't know if the rears are inverted as well, but it's on the bottom, the adjuster. And yeah, this adjuster had snapped off completely. And this adjuster was like hanging on by a thread. I managed to get this side adjusted, but not this one. So yeah, I've got no idea what the uh, dampening is on, on the front right. But I got the other ones done to like a medium level. But yeah, we need to, need to fix that. We did another session, there were quite a few lockups when I was pushing, front and rear. I was adjusting the bias, we've got adjustable bias. I was adjusting it all I could, but yeah, I just need to get some more time in the in the cockpit, I think, and we'll be all right. You have to excuse the wind, it's just really picked up here at Snetterton. 
No rain yet, but it looks like it could be any time. So I've finished prepping the car for the second session. We've lost a session today, unfortunately. I steamed down this morning. Only had a few hours kip steamed down here to make the sessions and it was so foggy they couldn't even run the, the track until about 10.40 10 I think we went out, 20 to 11. So, but yeah, so much on this car was loose. I've just been going around and checking. Obviously I checked it yesterday as well, but I don't know if it's, it was just a little bit loose and me going out on that first session just finished it off. But yeah, both of the um, track red ends were loose into the hub. They've got um, cotter pins in, uh, split pins in to, to stop it, the, the bolt coming out, but they were loose. And the top mount was loose as well. And you know, I've spoken to some people here and they're just like, yeah, that just happens. Oh, we're getting a wave, look. Apparently that just happens to these cars all the time, which seems ridiculous to me. I never have this with the MR2, things just coming loose. But we're on the sticky tyres now, so we've got some front grip. Apparently the rear grip's not too important. But the issue that we're going to have with the rears is these have been flat spotted quite a lot. With no ABS, obviously. <laughs> well, I thought I might be able to see one, but this tyre in particular is not too clever. And once obviously you get a flat spot, then you, you can pick it up quite easily and it's going to affect the braking performance. So I'm going to try and get some more tyres. There's a couple of race teams here, they've got a few tyres kicking about. So I'm probably going to buy some tyres uh, ready for qualifying tomorrow to have some good rears. I'm going to keep the shit ones on the back now because at least if I do lock up it means I lock up the rears and not the fronts. But yeah we're just about to go out for the second session then. So we're a little bit off pace after the first one. We're, we're all, it was alright, we did a, a 219 which is about what I did in the MR2. But we should be a couple of seconds faster than that. We want to be about 217, 216 if we can. So I need to try and find three seconds. But with these tyres I think I'll have a lot more confidence but... I don't know if I've got three seconds more confidence, but ah, we'll see what we can do, eh? The car seems pretty good. I've just topped the oil up way above the twist. We used to do it to the twist in the K-Swap days, but out of the um, third, uh, the fourth corner, Agostini, the tight left, uh, the car was dropping out of VTEC, and I thought it was just me um, being low in the revs, but I've looked back at the footage and no, and uh, the data as well, and no, I wasn't, I wasn't too low in the revs. I should have been in VTEC, but the car just didn't have oil pressure to do the VTECs, so... Yeah, it was, it was well up um, to the maximum marker, to, to, above that even, to the twist on the dipstick, but yeah, I've had to go even a bit more than that now. So, yeah, I don't know if it's got, I presume it must have a baffled sump, I don't know which one it's got, but yeah, I was getting oil, uh, not enough oil pressure, <laughs> so yikes, dog, yeah, sketchy, but everyone's starting the cars up now, we're getting ready for our second session, so I'll see you out there. The second session was a lot better than the first so we've got the brand new front tyres on and I can't remember what exactly what I did but found some things were loose on the car for starters tightened them up and yeah I think I might have added some rear tyre pressure or I might have put the front tyres on the rear or something like that the tyres that were on the original rims they were all pretty knackered I probably should have got a full set really uh, but yeah, this session was a lot better, had a good couple of battles with a good couple of cars. So right out of the gate we got into a little bit of a scuffle with some EP3s which was good, so I could kind of benchmark myself against them. felt like the car was a little bit lacking in the straights Now all the cars are um, controlled in the engine department they've all got the same exhaust intake map everything's the same right but some cars definitely seemed a bit faster than others I mean you know it's a production series so there'll be tricks here and there won't there but yeah our car definitely didn't seem quite as bright as some of the other ones I felt like I was a bit too close to those two cars in front, I didn't think I was learning much so I decided to give them a couple of seconds gap and then go out on my own and see what I could do. Yeah. 
into the first corner, super tricky. I just, yeah, yeah, overshot it slightly. Ambition over adhesion, as Martin would say, yeah. I didn't have my rear camera rigged up for this session, but we've got an EP3 gaining on us. And towards the end of the lap, I decided to pull over and let him pass to try and see if I could figure out where he was faster. He was definitely faster, he was catching me pretty quickly. pretty strange about the EP3 watching it back now I mean I didn't know it at the time when I was driving but the amount of times I'm taking my hands away from the wheel to either shuffle it or you know just breaking that 9.3 that I just hold solid in the MR2 and the M3 pretty much constantly it's, yeah, it's quite a lot of shuffling going on I'm just letting that red EP3 through now, so this was the fast one that was catching me up. And now I'm going to try and cling to him. I mean, my exit wasn't perfect coming out of the last corner, but it did seem like a lot of the cars had a good pace advantage on me. Kind of forced my way through here a little bit rude style. Just wanted to try and cling to this red card and see just uh, just where I was losing time, but I didn't do so well. The magnets weren't so strong. I need to tune them up a bit, but I gave it my best shot. So you can see he's a very competent driver through his line there. Yeah, very nice that. just breaking into it. I couldn't break the same without locking up. Now I discovered a little trick after speaking to some drivers which I'll tell you more about in the race video which definitely helped me breaking performance. But yeah as it was on a test day I just couldn't break quite as late as some of these other drivers and I definitely couldn't keep up with them in the straights either. Behind this red car, I was definitely giving it my all to try and keep up. Obviously, trying to learn the limits of uh, the car at the same time. But yeah, I'd say I was probably at the top end of my own limit. But as you can see, I'm not keeping up with him. Get a bit lucky here because he gets stalled by another car. So there's me thinking, ah, I've got an opportunity to catch him up again here, but then that same car does the same to me. Just gets in the way a little bit. tried to maximise my run out of here. I felt like I got a better run out than the black car but wasn't good enough to be able to pull past. I kind of had to force my way around on the outside here. Luckily they stayed inside to let me do that so thank you very much. Unless they were just staying inside because that's the fastest way but. Yeah full attack into T1. I want to catch up with that red car but nah. Once again, ambition over adhesion. I couldn't make it stick around T1. Now, whilst that was all going on, one of the cars that we passed a lot before was sticking quite close to us both. So I let that car through to see if I could maybe keep up with him instead. And this ended up being quite a close little battle for a lap or so. Managed to get the car 
I pointed in pretty well at Agostini there. But it was rare I was doing that until I discovered this top secret trick which I'll tell you about in the race video. So the driver of 777, he was pretty leery, it was good to see. He was going balls to the wall for sure. thinking it was good that I'd found someone that I was pretty much on pace with, pretty even. Obviously the red car was a lot faster than every other car before then seemed, you know, not as competent so yeah it was good to be behind this chap but I think this was a little bit rude. I mean he was clearly struggling with something on his car so I just kind of hugged the inside a little bit just to get ahead. And then yeah, it's a shame we didn't have the rear camera on for this because yeah, he was giving me a good battle. I did put the rear camera on for all the future drives. So this lap ended up being my best lap for the full day. Finally got it to stick just about in turn one. Braked as late as what I dared in turn two. Still a little bit of locking up the rears, but nothing too dangerous. Just like the MR2, I was having to shift up to fourth and then straight back down to third for turn three. the apex quite a bit here but didn't seem to slow me down that much. I was struggling a lot with the tighter corners just getting the car stopped without locking the brakes although this tight right hander was pretty good all day to be honest I can't remember the name of it it's got a silly name on it. Loads of confidence breaking into Brundle. Is it? Just a really clean lap, ended up being a low 217, so pretty good time, all things considered, for the second session in the car anyway. But we still need to do a bit of work, we could still do it being you know a second or so faster. So I carried on pushing, of course, but yeah, I couldn't in the end get the car to quite do what I wanted it to do. Shout out to Joe's dad, Mac, for helping me uh, in the pit stop here. I was a bit concerned about the front wheels because the wheel nuts were a bit suspect that I'd managed to get for it. Little tuner nuts, but the way they were seating on the yellow wheels didn't seem quite right.
so Mac checked the tyre pressures and also re the front wheels and yeah they'd come a little bit loose which I expected so it wasn't too bad Cheers. when I went back out I had time just for one more lap so full attack and Why is it spicy? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I decided to take the uh, grass there rather than the curb. If you remember from a Snetterton track walk, the curb there is quite savage and I was quite concerned about damaging the car or the wheels, so I took the grass rather than risking smashing the curb. I maybe would have made it, but oh well, that ended up being the last lap anyway, so pulled into the pits then. Alright, second session all done. So we got a couple of laps into the 17s there on the fresh tyres, which is nice. We need to try and do a bit better though. I don't know if we can do better. A few things working against me. This car just keeps losing its uh, geometry. So I've thrown the strings on, so I've done two sessions, haven't I? I've had a few offs, you know, I went on the grass, but it didn't hit anything that hard. But yeah, the, the alignment's all over the shop. I can't believe how bad it's got so quickly. It's really putting me off the EP3 Type R trophy, legitimately. Like, you don't have to do this with the MR2 if you're going off the grass a little bit. Stupid. So the rear toe's all over the shop. The front's not too bad. Uh, the camber on the left side squiffed a bit, not too much. But, yeah, just um, not really feeling how much maintenance these things need. It's crazy. I was just going to leave it. I was just going to check it and not change anything, so I didn't think it would be this bad, but it's, it's hilariously bad. It's just crazy. I mean, the wind's not helping. Uh, the strings are bouncing about a bit, but yeah. I've got um, like loads of toe out on one and loads of toe in on the other kind of thing. Like, it's just stupid. And the, the front's, I say, about all right. So I'm not going to play, play with the front, I don't think. The front's not too bad, but yeah, the rear is all over the shop, so I'm going to have to do something about it. We've got one more session, almost certainly going to be wet, but we've got about half an hour or so till the next session. Well, before I need to start getting ready for the next session. So I've got half an hour just to play with the rear toe. I didn't bring any of my turn plates or anything like that, but I'll just do it on the floor and just have a go. It's not too difficult to adjust the rear toe on these. It's right at the back like the MR2, it's just an eccentric bolt or an eccentric washer. But uh, a bigger problem the car's got though is on the left-hand turns, it keeps dropping oil pressure still and dropping out of VTEC. And it's really concerning, for sure, really concerning. I'm just gonna check the oil again now. I'm not checking it to come back in, but I'm pretty sure the oil will still be well past the, the twist. There's some, some reason, I don't know if the oil pump's on its way out or something like that, but yeah, it's it's not having a good time at all on the oil pressure, which is not good, because that could, you know, quite quickly detonate the engine, which is not what you want, is it? Not when you're borrowing someone else's car, that's for sure. But I got on with the tow, I checked the oil. There's not a lot else I can really do. Yeah, maintenance. I'm on my own as well today, so Joe's been helping me out a bit. If you remember, I drove a Civic, what's it like to drive an EP3? Well, that's the EP3 over there, now he races it, the one at the back with the yellow bits on it. He's been helping me out a little bits and bats, but yeah, on my own. Josh and Joe are here tomorrow for the, the race vlog this weekend, by the way, is going to be mega, because Joe, Josh and Chris are all in the same race in their EGs. And obviously I'm doing loads of racing as well in the Type R Championship, so uh, Type R Trophy. So yeah, it's going to be mega, loads of Honda stuff this weekend, but EP3 is proving to be a bit of a pain. And if anyone's thinking, just race the DC2, well, there's not a DC2 Type R Trophy, you know, there's not. It's, it's the close racing that I'm after, not so much wanting to race a cool car or anything like that. It's the close racing that I'll enjoy. You know, I could put the DC2 into those multi-class events things, but it's not that often you get a real good battle with someone in them kind of races, is it? It's more of a fun thing. And this is all, you know, everyone's in the same machinery, so it's just driver performance, driver versus driver, isn't it? And the rear tyres have got so many flat spots now, I've probably added a few. I've, well, I don't know if I'm adding a few or if I'm just going the same ones, but I'm locking the rear so much, so my braking performance is down. We're going to get some better tyres for tomorrow, though. We'll sort out some better tyres uh, for the rear. The fronts are fine. Fronts feel fine, just need to sort out this real alignment, so yeah, I'll get to it and I'll see you on the other side. 
Just doing some paddock walking. Looks like everyone's testing today. So many cars are out here. Unless they've just brought some cars down to finish off. But I'm next to a load of EP3s as well, obviously. Load of Clio's testing today as well. But yeah, there must be like 20 type bars just testing. There can't be many more of them on the actual grid. Mental. This one's for the championship tomorrow in the battle. It's another Torque GT sponsored car, Jay Hewlett. Right, it's time for the last session. It's just started raining, spitting a little bit. Hopefully it don't get too bad. We can deal with a bit of spitting, everybody in, but I uh, would prefer if it didn't rain loads. Yeah, we'll have to make do with these tyres. We've sorted out some new rears for tomorrow. One of the other competitors we saw early, Hewlett's going to give me some old rears that he had for a fair price indeed. So yeah, we'll get some better rears on that aren't so flat spotted and I should have better brakes for tomorrow for qualifying. But yeah, last session, let's go out and have a Raz. Oh, I need to put some fuel in it. Ha! <laughs> yes, yes. Fuel is good. All right, I'll see you out there. So we have a wet weather test for our last session. Could be a good thing, isn't it, really? On to the last session then. This ended up being wet. Ended up being a lot of fun as well. It was good to drive the car in the wet. I would have preferred another dry session, but you know there was a good chance it was going to be raining for one of the races. We've got you know two days of racing at Snetterton to come, so what were the chances of both days being dry? Some wet experience, yeah. Why not? Let's take it. So to start with, um, struggled with the car. I didn't really do any preparations for the wet running. I should have really put some more air in the tyres and you know I could have done some stuff with the roll bars and stuff but I just drove it as it finished the second session it didn't look like it was going to be so wet and then yeah just before we went out it started really pouring it down and although it doesn't look so wet on the camera the track was super greasy and yeah I didn't do too bad to start with but this on my outlap here had a big lock up and yeah I just went straight on and this is the corner that I was loving all day so yeah I knew I had to change my driving I think the lap times were something like 30 seconds a lap slower in the wet I did end up getting in a solid groove with the circuit though, you know, practicing wet lines and just trying to be consistent around the track and, you know, figuring out what I was going to do here, there and everywhere on, on the wet side. There was obviously some corners where you couldn't avoid crossing the dry line, but I do feel like this year I've learned a lot about wet weather racing. So yeah, this was just another opportunity to, to tune them skills, I guess, especially on these tyres. So naturally I wasn't completely without the odd mistake. Just getting a little bit sideways here and there, but yeah, overall the car felt pretty good in the wet. It felt like he had good pace and I was passing a lot of cars. Yeah, I kept having the odd slide, but overall the pace was pretty good. doing the most laps in this last session. I was out at the start, I didn't come in until the end, so you know, it could have done with being dry, but I was having a good time out there. There was the odd moment here and there obviously where you know the car started sliding or whatever, but 
you can really get to know a car in the wet so you know I don't think I've driven a wet Snetterton before anyway recently either so it was all good fun all good practice Miraculously, I never actually went off at turn one in the wet either. Just seemed to be a dry weather tactic. I was doing that. I didn't even lose the back end at turn two either. Here's another example of let's watch the EP3 in front walk away a little bit. I mean, he's got a fair gap on me here to start with, but just gets further and further away down the straight. It's not that I think these cars are too fast, I think it's just that the car I was in was a bit slow. This footage seems to work really well at four times speed, I don't know what it feels like to you, but. Seems to work alright. Obviously, it's sped up, but you know, it doesn't sound ridiculous or anything, does it? But yeah, I finished the day with a good bit of confidence in the car, a good bit of confidence in Snetterton in the wet. Right, that was it then, the final session. So the next time we'll be out in the EP3, we'll be qualifying in the morning. That was good fun. Well, it's actually the day after yesterday. A little outro for you. It's the morning, obviously. It rained real heavy last night. I got really wet. <laughs> Why did I get really wet? Well. You know, just checking over the car, doing bits and bats. Um, managed to get some better rear tyres for the rear. Mr Hewlett, thank you very much. So we've got some um, non-flat spotted rears. We've got some good fronts. Good, so we've got good tyres, good tyres. Zero excuses for tyres. Yeah, the car should be alright, everything's good. We're ready to go into qualifying. It's not raining, doesn't like it's going to rain all day. The track's obviously wet. But there's a few cars going out before I was on qualifying, so it should be alright. But yeah, I'll see you there. That's the end of the testing video. Looking forward to it. So remember the race weekend video is going to be hefty. It's going to be another one of my XXL race videos. Because I'm racing this. Josh and Joe are over the other side with their Civics. Yeah. Civic race weekend. Sound good? See you there. Snatter turn. Civic. Race weekend, Snetterton, Civic Race Weekend, Honda Civic Racing at Snetterton, Honda Civic Racing at Snetterton, for everybody except Kevin.